and we are back. Okay, as you guys can see, there's Luna enjoying this beautiful Saturday. And we've got a guest star here today. That is Loopy. That is Luna's friend. And Loopy just walked, walked off the frame. That's all right, we'll see more of Loopy later. Uh, we've got something special for you guys today. Um, again, we've got a guest cook. I'm gonna be the sous chef today. And Loopy, who you just wa saw walk off the frame, actually and i have something in common and we're gonna go over that in a bit so uh when i bring you guys back i will introduce the um the guests to our channel today and also tell you what we are going to be making be back in a bit okay welcome back everyone um here we are i mentioned we're, we're on a bit of a, a field trip today um uh i mentioned earlier you guys saw loopy um something that we have in common and that is that loopy's dad is also my dad and so what we're gonna do, uh, my dad's gonna join us today. He's gonna be the main cook. I'm gonna be the sous chef. I'm really looking forward to it. Whole different type of cooking that I really haven't got into before. Um, so that's gonna be fun. And it's just, it's gonna be uh, really fun to, really cool to do this with my dad. So without further ado, let me introduce my dad to the channel. Hey, thanks Hi. for joining us. Hi everyone. Uh, it's fun, hey, cheers. Hi Loop, yeah, cheers. Happy Saturday. Yeah. Cheers, oh, there's Loopy Loop. back in the camera. So dad, uh, let's tell everybody what you're, what you're gonna do, do for us today. Well, I've never been much of a cook, just the usual barbecuing and things like that. But then when the pandemic came, I needed another activity that I could do around the house. And so I decided to explore cooking more. And one of the things that I explored was cooking with a wok. And so, you know, I found a wonderful wok. This wok is made out of the blade from a disc plow. If you've ever been by farmer's fields and seen a big plow full of discs turning up the soil, that's my wok is one of those blades. And the dish we're gonna make today is called broccoli beef. It's actually one of the easier things to learn to do in a wok, but uh, it's very tasty. It, uh, it's made slightly different ways in different Chinese traditions like Cantonese, Szechuan and the latest one I've tried is Hunan and that's what we're going to have today because I really like the extra uh, Amount of heat that's added when you cook a Hunan dish. So what really struck out to me about this meal um, Is not only that but it's a the wok is actually an outdoor wok. It's a propane type thing, right? <laughs> yeah, this is actually one of the biggest sources of peace between my wife and I the fact that I can do all this Hi. Grease splattering outdoors and not all over her kitchen. Well, cool. And so I, I was looking over the recipe. Like I said, I, this is new to me. I, I don't I haven't done a ton of. Uh, I do a lot of like Thai cooking sometimes, but not uh, Chinese. So this will be fun. Um, I'm assuming it'll probably be similar to like maybe a uh, takeout uh, broccoli beef. But the recipe seems like there's a lot more cool ingredients than you might find in the traditional, you know, what we're used to. So it should be pretty neat. Yeah, I like the typical American. This is neither totally uh, Cantonese, Szechuan, or Hunan. It's sort of a blend or of the three and a blend of a little bit of American at the same time. So I enjoy it. I hope if you try this, you'll enjoy it too. Well, cool. Hey, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to go in. Uh, we've got the ingredients laid out. Uh, they look great. Um, and so when we bring you guys back, we'll show you what we're working with. Be back in a bit. Okay, and we are back. Ooh, we, as you guys can see, we have got a lot of really good looking ingredients here. And so uh, my dad here, let's explain uh, what we're working with. Maybe starting with the beef over here. Well, this is flank steak. A lot of dishes that are walked use flank steak. It's already cut pretty thin, and so it's easy to cut and prepare for a walk, which you'll see in a few minutes. This is our broccoli. This is our green onions and our ginger. And Ooh, fresh ginger, good. Fresh yeah. ginger and garlic yeah. and some fermented beans from China. Why don't you tell them, what, what, are, the, what kind are these beans now exactly? It's, it, they're black beans, right? <laughs> yeah, it's part of the recipe. I can't tell you much more <laughs> than the fact that I ordered them off of Amazon and they came and, came and said, be sure to rinse before using them. So I, I made sure I rinsed. All right. And of course, this is mung bean sprouts, which is used in a lot of Chinese dishes. And this mm -hmm. is our mushrooms. And you've got a special way to do mushrooms. I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing that. Right, and we'll be heading into that pretty soon because uh -huh. this dinner is prepared in stages. The first stage helps to begin the preparation of three different things, which is the marinating of the meat, the uh, cooking, very, very slow cooking the mushrooms to drive the water out, and um, the chopping up and blanching of the broccoli. And cool. then after that, we go into the second stage, which is the walking. Okay, all right, and then we're working our way over. We've got some sauces and stuff over here, it looks like. Yeah, we've got some uh, chili and, uh, and 
an oil, which is what makes it the Hunan style. We've got some regular soy sauce. We've got some sesame seed oil. We've got some oyster um, Oyster sauce, some, something, huh? Yeah. And some <laughs> um, cornstarch and some rice. Okay. Chicken broth. Great. And these are basically the spices, and in the case of the cornstarch, it's an element in the tenderizing of the beef. Cool. And then it looks like we got some mixed up there, so we're good to go there. And some... this is the final sauce that goes in toward the end of the walking, and that's a combination of um, of the um, oyster mm -hmm. sauce, the sweet soy sauce, which I don't see here anymore. Yeah. Well, it's in there. Yeah. I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and the wine, which is not here, just in case you... So you know well, don't don't put too much wine, wine in there because we're gonna we're gonna want some of that wine later probably. So. Probably are yeah. <laughs> All and right, a little bit of the chicken broth, and that's what's in the final sauce. Perfect. All right, so when we bring you guys back, we will show you our next step. Be back in a bit. Okay, and we are back. Uh, first step is getting that uh, meat prepared, uh, marinated. So my dad's gonna show you how we do that. Um, the recipe only calls for twelve ounces of meat, but. The smallish package they had at the market this morning was a pound and a half. And so usually what I do is I tri trim off the fat and the gristle for the dog. And so that it's the dog's to the, the dog is going to get more than she expected maybe, but that's fine. Luna would like a little bit of that. Gristle. Yeah, Luna could get a little bit of that too. Yeah. And so you can see there's gristle parts on here and that'll be trimmed off. This is the grain of the meat. We first slice with the grain into two inch uh, long strips. And then we slice against the grain a quarter inch to have the smaller ones. And so first thing I'm going to do is slice here until I have approximately two inch strips with the grain. And then uh, that meat looks really good. Yeah, this is flank steak and that's commonly used in walking because it seems to go well. And it's an inexpensive cut of meat, but it tastes really good when you prepare it in a wok. And so as I go, I'm going to be trimming off a generous amount of this gristle because we have really a little bit of extra meat to spare. I think Luna feels like a lot of that should be trimmed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of here, some of the trimming off here. Yeah, see, there's more. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Dog approved. Um, and then here's some back here. We'll trim off. I think I'll just trim off a big hump because we are trying to reduce this from a pound and a half, maybe a little less than a pound. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, uh, oh, here's one in here that needs to be trimmed off. I just felt that. That was an extra one. Yeah, yeah. and here's some that's going in there. So we'll get that, that's fine. And then here's one that I think I'll just, normally I would trim around this, but I'm being a little more generous today than I normally would be. Okay, uh, back to cutting up this meat. And I think this is an important thing to note about the grains and how my dad's cutting it. So he'll explain that to you. So we cut it lengthwise with the grain, but now we're cutting shorter uh, width pieces against the grain because the pieces that are cut against the grain are the ones that would be tough when you chew them or cut them. And so lengthwise, they're with the grain, across the grain, grain uh, is, is going to help us. But the other thing that, of course, is going to help us quite a bit is that we're going to put this in a tenderizer made out of cornstarch next and leave it for a half hour. But the first process to make this relatively inexpensive cut of beef good is to cut long strips with the grain and then short strips against the grain, which we just finished doing. Cool, cool. So now we'll dive in, I guess, uh, to the marinade here. Starch. And so this is our teaspoon. And uh, this recipe, I'm going to leave a a description of it in the comments below or the drop down section. So if you guys want to make this, you'll have all those uh, measurements as well. So don't worry to try to take note as we're filming. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the soy sauce, which is two teaspoons. You know, it's funny, Dad, is I think that I, as you've watched my videos, I learned from you to do the just guesstimation. And now I guess as you've started cooking, you do you like to get it more uh, <laughs> Well, precise. maybe as time goes on, I'll guesstimate more. But this wok cooking is something that's fairly new yeah, yeah. to me also. And so we want to add the ginger. Now I chopped up the ginger while we were off camera. And so the ginger that's been chopped is going to go in there. And as we mentioned, that's a French fresh ginger. So it's going to add a lot of uh, vibrant flavor to that for mm -hmm. sure. 
And then I think we put some wine. Oh, wine should definitely there. go in there. Yeah. A tablespoon of wine. We're not going to skimp on the wine. It, if it spills over a little bit, that's fine. <laughs> Except the wine doesn't want to open for us. It doesn't want to open. No, there it goes. Open. All right. There we go. Okay. And then... Did we already put our soy oh, sauce? Oh, sesame oil. Oh yeah, a little oil too. Sesame oil is very important. Sesame oil is very flavorful. I, I didn't know how flavorful it was until I started cooking for the wok. And, and uh, you don't need very much to, to get the flavor from sesame oil. Well, it's a high heat oil too, right? So it's probably gonna help a lot. Do you put more oil in actually in the wok? Oh more? yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Right. I usually use grapeseed oil just cause that's what I use to season my cast iron mm -hmm. pots and pans. But um, I think in traditional Chinese cooking, they prefer peanut oil. So if you would prefer to use peanut oil, um, more power to you. Let's see. I like peanut oil too. Salt and pepper. I don't know if we put our soy sauce in there. Did that already go in there? Maybe it did. I can't. Yeah, I put soy sauce in there. Oh, I see. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm fouling up the recipe. They would have had double soy sauce. So we're going to put a little bit of pepper. And some uh, salt. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's special salt. Very special yeah, salt. it's Kent Rollins salt. If you guys don't know who that is, you should definitely check out his channel. He's got a bunch of cool outdoor a chuck wagon type cooking, so. And then we mix all this with our fingers together until, every, until everything is coated. And then um, we leave it for a half hour to do its magic. And while we're leaving this, we do two other things that are gonna take a half hour to do. And one of them is to uh, fry the mushrooms and get rid of all the water that's in the mushrooms right now. And the other one is to blanch the uh, Broccoli. And while I'm on the subject, a lot of times people don't bother to blanch the broccoli, but what I found is that if you try to stir fry broccoli without blanching it, you get broccoli that's perfectly stir fried on the outside and totally raw in the middle. And some people might like it that way if you do cook it that way, but I like it to where it's slightly cooked in the middle. And the way that you do that is blanching it. You get a a pot of boiling water, you put the broccoli in, you leave it in just for a minute, no more than a minute, then you take it out and drain it. And while it's draining, it's, it's also hot and it's also cooking a little bit even after you take it out of the boiling water. So that's, first I'm gonna wash my hands, so that might be all that you need for this section. <laughs> and then we'll go back and do the next thing. All right, we'll bring you guys back. Okay, and we are back, and my dad's gonna show you what we are gonna do with those uh, mushrooms. Why don't you explain that to them? Okay, we got three things going on here. This pot is under very low heat, this skillet for the mushrooms. This is under high heat, which is gonna boil that we're gonna use for blanching the broccoli for a very short time. And this is the gristle for the dogs. And so the reason I do this is that when I started learning how to cook over the pandemic, a lot of chefs say, don't ever wash the mushrooms, just brush them off. But when I saw the particles on the mushrooms and I imagine what the particles may or may not be, <laughs> I didn't like that idea. So I washed the mushrooms to get rid of the particles. And then I put it over a very low heat for a fairly long time, maybe 25 minutes, a half hour, to drive all the moisture out and that does the same thing. The problem with using washed mushrooms in cooking is that the mushrooms turned out to be bland if they're soaked with water. But if I drive the water out, and you'll see the mushroom size reduces quite a bit when we get done with this, we get back to the same flavorful mushrooms that all the great chefs want us to have. So I put this in here, and we'll watch it from time to time. The, the heat is low enough that we don't have to worry about it too much, but we will turn it to keep it from burning, and uh, if we need to adjust the heat, we will. I'm kind of turning some of these over so that the bottom sides face the heat to start with, because I think they absorb the most heat that way. There's a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. And so after the mushrooms uh, get rid of their water, they'll actually start to fry a little bit before we throw them into the wok. And that uh, enables us to have all the flavor. Uh, and so. That looks good. So what we're gonna do is I will bring you guys back to show you what that final product is. 
My dad actually sent me a really cool uh, video specifically on this topic of Kashmir mushrooms and seeing the whole process through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description below. So if you guys want to delve into that a little bit more, um, definitely recommend checking that out. So when I bring you guys back, I think we might be out at that walk. Just kidding. A uh, little bit more prep work to do. So my dad's going to show you there's a certain way that we need to um, chop up this broccoli. So we're going to dive into that now. Go ahead. <laughs> A lot of you guys are probably familiar with chopping up broccoli, but certain some of you may be like me, a complete newcomer to everything. And so what we want to do is to cut off all the stems of the broccoli from back here because we want to end up with a lot oh, of broccoli on a lot there. of stems. But if we just start chopping into the broccoli, everything's going to come out uh, as a mush. And so when I want to get smaller pieces of broccoli, I chop the stems up and then pull them apart. Uh, there isn't much more to it than that, so if you want to cut off now, that's fine. And you don't want to just have them watch you do the whole thing? You can watch me do the whole head of broccoli <laughs> if you want to, but I don't know if you need to do that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, guys, I think this is actually, now I'm, Now it's for real. So when we come back, we'll be out at that walk, and we're going to show you how to cook this all up. Be back in a few. Okay, and we are back. Wow. As you can see this cool uh, walk we got going on here. Um, this is a propane uh, heated walk. Oh, stand in front of the picture there. So you can see we got some steam going up. So dad, why don't you tell everybody what we're gonna be doing now? So we've been heating up the wok for a few minutes until it gets some smoke coming off, which we've got now. So we can start cooking. And we start by we putting oil. our aromatics on there. Our aromatics yep. are our, in this case, are our uh, garlic and our onion tops and these fermented magical beans. So I start <laughs> by putting a little bit of oil in there. And then, um, this is so neat right here. Wait, do you need a tool? I got a tool right oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to throw um, the first part of the aromatics on there, which are these things here. Oh, wow, cool. And then these magical beans go in there. And this is the, the garlic and the uh, green onions and also these magic beans. Just the green onion top. Yeah, the black green onion here. bottoms. Now, here's my magical tool, which is my oh, rock smell that. Wow, that smells good already. So I throw these around for a second. Wow. So these are already cooked, so now these have to come off the plate. Oh, I, oh, I like how you move them off the heat like that. Yeah, we move them off the heat. Oh, that's cool. And they want to, of course, slide back down, which is their prerogative. <laughs> and then uh, the next thing is the meat. All right, here you go. Yep. All right, good. Here you go. And so um, we try to get the meat in a, a layer as much as we can so that each meat has contact with the heat, bearing in mind that as we do this, the meat we put it put in before is cooking, and so we have a limited amount of time to be picky about this. And so we're putting in the meat in a layer, and um, it's getting actually pretty cool in, in the place where I'm at out there. Probably why they only wanted 12 ounces of meat, but oh well. And you kind of move it up and then back down. And it well, yeah, you, yeah. you eventually stir fry it, but right, right. right now. The recommendation is to put in all the meat in a single layer. We might have to grab some down to make that happen. Don't stir fry your fingers. Okay. No, we don't want to stir fry any fingers. Um, you want me to get that out of your way? Yeah. All right, that's good. So now we're going to start stir frying. We'll give it a second to cook in a more or less single layer, which is not really a single layer. But much as we can manage. How long would you say like the uh, steak here is going to cook? For? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, cool. So let's let that steak uh, start to cook. We'll bring you guys back and we bring on the veggies. Dad, we're back. All right, so the next thing that happens is after we stir fry this meat a little bit, which I'm about to get to the point that it's stir fried as much as I want for now, we're going to take the meat and these aromatics off of the fire. Okay. And uh, man, that already smells. You can really smell the all the onions and the meat. Oh wow, it's great! It's got a lot of color on there already. Mm-hmm. That's real cool. Now, do they stay still? Here, They're a little. Bring this down. Oh, see, I got it in the wrong spot there. There you go. So let's. And bring it over here. So All right, I'll bring it. Well, now you're going to block the camera from there. Uh, 
washer. Okay, we got everything wow. off the washer. Well, now it's time this. to put the veggies on. All right, cool. What do you need first? This this thing here. This has right. the onion uh, stems and the broccoli. Oh, we should put on a little more oil first. Yeah, we need more oil on there too. Yeah. You probably like all that stuff down there that started. That probably has a lot of flavor down there. Does it yeah, build up? That has a name. You probably know it. Farm? Farm, yeah. So this is the onions and the, 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 the broccoli. And uh, my dad mentioned earlier with the broccoli, what was that word? Uh, we uh, blanched, it. blanched it. Right. So it's already got a little bit of cook on there, which I think is going to be great because if I had any complaint about uh, broccoli beef that I've had in the past, is I don't really like it too tough. So I think this is going to work out real well. Cool. Now, do you need to go get uh, mushrooms, or you're good on that for a while? Or? Oh, no, go get the mushrooms. Oh, I'm on it. I'm They've on been it. cooking. There's no problem with that, but we need to put them in right now. All right. All right, the mushrooms are, are here. In an instant. There you go. Perfect. Oh, those are great. All right, that's good. Now we can put the meat and everything back on. All right, just just dump it in there. Yeah, dump it in. All right. Let's see if it is. Wow. All right. Now everything that we're cooking is in there, and so the only thing, two things are left: the bean sprouts, which hardly need to cook at all. You just wave them over the fire, and they're done. <laughs> and then. Um, of course, the sauce, which is oh, we, oh, that sauce is over here. Yeah, yeah we got that in hand. All right. I'm glad my son remembered the mushroom. <laughs> I need a little help from time to time. I think you do just fine. No, this looks great. Man, what a lively color that is too, with all the broccoli. Wow. Okay, bring me the uh, sauce. Sauce, all right. So I pour the sauce around the outside so that the sauce is hot by the time it hits the stir fry. Oh, this is what all the people that know what they're talking about in surf I say to do. Okay. So that's what I do. Gotcha. And so then we have this. Now you need a pot? Or you want me to go you get We got one. Oh, right? yeah. It's got it. orange pot. Oh, right, 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 right. And now throw the, the bean sprouts on there. Got it. All of them, just all of them. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Just a couple of tosses of that, just so that they're in there. Where they're wow. Wow. Hot. But we don't want to really cook those bean sprouts because they're really good if they're still crunchy. Oh, yeah. That's All right, cool. now we're ready on hold. All right, great. Hey, guys, so uh, we're going to do this right now, and when we bring you back, we will show you how to plate this. Okay, guys, and we are back, and wow, look at that. What a awesome finished product you can see there we got the broccoli and the beef and the mushrooms and uh it's over a bed of some wild uh wild rice and so it smells great there's a beautiful sauce that's over there it's going to be really tasty but like i always say we don't know until we go in for that big bite so hang in there we'll be back and we'll tell you how this turned out okay and we're back hey thanks for for joining doing this today it was, it was so fun. much fun I enjoyed I, doing I, it. I, uh, it was great seeing a new recipe, and I just enjoyed spending the time with you. So yeah, me too. Good. Well, cheers. Let's dive into this thing. See cheers. what we end up with. It, it looks amazing already, Dad. So this big bite. Let's go for it. All right. I'm gonna dive into that steak because that looks so good. Mmm. Mmm. Sauce turned out good. Mmm. Mmm. Right off the bat, the steak is really good. So much flavor in those spices. The broccoli is more tender than you would expect normally, for, and so that works really well. That is just really good. So this dish uh, turned out great. Thank you. Um, and uh, like I always say, like if uh, you're not already, please subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Um, hit that thumbs up button and get those notifications. We'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to sit and enjoy this meal now. Thanks, guys. See you later.